If you've ever seen a Karen Black film, you know that when she is on screen, it is impossible to look away. You probably have seen one of her movies. She's made nearly 200 of them. Everything from Easy Rider to House of a Thousand Corpses. So we're pretty excited that she's invited us to her home here in LA to hang out and wax philosophical about the art of acting. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous because she has been known to turn interviews around on the interviewer um, and I'm a little bit worried that she might get me to reveal things about myself that I'm not really comfortable with. But, but you know, sometimes you've got to throw caution to the wind. Once upon a time I had an idea of what the first question I was going to ask you was, but now I've forgotten it. So You're very lanky. <laughs> You know, I think you're an ectomorph. Ectomorph. An ectomorph is a person with long, thin bones. Mm. So should we talk about the farm when I was little? Sure. It popped into mind. I didn't know that you, you had a farm? You grew oh, up on a farm? No, I wish I had a farm. So no. You grew up in Park Ridge, Illinois, right? You look at me like you're suspecting what, I, what I'm saying is going to make no sense. You got that kind of... Oh, well, no, I, I hmm. think you're just... Kind of reinventing history you're reinventing now. Reinventing history. I'm lying. Where's, where's the farm? She's, come what, in? He, what he wants to say, you're lying now, Karen. Where's the farm? I didn't read about the farm. Well, I don't know if it was maybe just in a code for something else. <laughs> <laughs> Too many sci fi thrillers for you. Um, my mother's mother's sister, Great Aunt Ruth, and Claire owned a wealthy milk farm in, in uh, Wisconsin. And I would say that, that those may have been my happiest days as a child. Uh, because I think because there wasn't really the stress of city, and therefore it was peaceful. And as a child, when it's peaceful, there's more space. And your memory is better, because things are pleasing and pleasure rather than turbulence. And that's it. So I just loved it. I loved the cows. I learned to milk cows. And I couldn't, of course, eat that milk. <laughs> And um, I would sit with a chicken. I sat with a dying chicken once and noticed that its eye closed up and down, just down. Thomas Hardy, when he died, they buried him in the poet's corner in the in a little graveyard for fabulous poets. But what they did was um, he had his heart cut out and, and he brought it home to the graveyard near his house. So I started, I started wondering what? This makes no sense. This is another lie. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just waiting to see where this is going. I'm, I'm well, I mean, it's an interesting question you might ask people. You know, there are graveyards, and there we have a graveyard here. We have a cemetery there. But if your heart, where would you bury your heart? Where would you bury your heart? Where would your heart belong? And it belongs on the farm. Where would you bury your heart? I always had a fantasy of, you know, my body being cremated and then something interesting being done with the ashes, like being snorted or uh, <laughs> something along those lines. Say hello, little tasty. Hello, what are you doing under there now? You should not have fleas, you know, Sarah. Are you, are you getting this cat? Getting this beautiful green-eyed puss? Though you've made, you know, like I said, nearly 200 movies, for a lot of people, what stands out most are your horror films. And I'm very ones, sorry to hear that. Really? But I mean, no, I mean. Yes, I'm very sorry to hear what you just said. Well, That's all. I mean, I think some people you say your name, you say the name Karen Black, and they think Five Easy Pieces, Easy Rider. Some people say. You mean that naked performance artist who, you know, cracks open eggs on her vulva? And they're like, no, no. And, and then some people say, oh, Burnt Offerings, Trilogy of Terror. I wonder why you think those horror films stand out so much. I think I have no particular persona. I do not have one. And there are people, that, and, uh, if you think of a lot of actors, they have a kind of persona. They do great movies and they do great parts and they do this and da 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 da, -da. You have an idea of them. But I, I am, unfortunately, as sort of nothing <laughs> except a witness. I'm sort of a witness. This is my personality. Is I'm, I think I'm warm-hearted, but I'm a witness. So when I do, um, 
Come back to five and dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, and then I do five easy pieces. You can't tell it's the same person. But if you do a horror movie and your name is Karen Black, and there's a band that's called the Voluptuous Horror of Karen Black, that everyone hears Karen Black, horror, black, or horror, voluptuous horror, um, then, then you can epitomize Karen Black. It isn't what I do. It isn't what interests me. It isn't what I'm good at. And so I'm sorry about it. But it did happen, and it's, you know, because of me, I have to take responsibility for it. I know I'm still doing strange movies sometimes. It was just one of those years, you know, um, where, you know, you make one decision and the rest of your life is just in another path. This happens with people, I think, who create their own careers more than people who work for companies and so forth. You can put your foot on a path and go completely different, a completely different route than you would have done. So you're saying that you did Trilogy of Terror and then somehow your career took a wrong path from this point? I mean, totally. Oh my God, yes. Jesus oh Christ. Christ. <laughs> oh We are hoping that something would be changing or could be. Should I pull a little, little bit of this? Just tell, remind me of this subject. Well, we were talking about horror. Oh, yes. No wonder I forgot. <laughs> but does that make sense to you? Do you know what I mean? Like, well, but I mean once they say Karen Black, horror, da, 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 sure, then, then they can, can hold that in memory. But looking at, like, your filmography, it's not like it just took this turn and then went all horror all the time. It looked like you kind of went back and forth between a variety of things, between horror and maybe more mainstream type, types of films. Um, there's a difference between what films that I do and the original notion that we were discussing, which was people think of you as. Mm, sure. I so see people think they think of me and they think of horror, and I think that's because the connectives mm. are good. I think also I was just really excellent in uh, uh, Trilogy of Terror. It took me many years to figure that one out. Mm -hmm. You know, we thought it was the doll, we thought it was Dan, we thought it was this, we thought, and then I thought, you know what, I'm really good in that. So yeah, because I was really scared by the doll, and you know, people eventually said, oh my God, you're all alone with this little piece of wood. And yet, we believed every minute of it that this little piece of wood was chasing you. In fact, the people doing the piece of wood were lousy. They were absolutely lousy what they did. They would sort of throw the doll after a while. This doll is thrown. And then they would... Um, the doll would be on a, just, you'd go and they'd have a floor, like up here. This is a floor. This is the floor and this is the apartment. And there's a whole, there's a ridge, there's a, what's the word? A, a, a road, a, a dent, an insertion. Groove. Yeah, yeah. Groove. There you go. Very good. Thanks. And in the, in the, in the groove, here comes the doll. Whatever it did, running, right? And then it'd stop, and then the legs would fly off. Then it'd stop, and then the head would fly. And then it'd stop, and the arms. And the whole, you could hear the whole set laughing. The whole stage was like, oh, because the dog had done some other ridiculous thing. Let's get more philosophical. Okay. I'd like to talk to you about um, your work in Ada Rulova's film, Meet the Eye. Which one of them is me? Tell me. I saw Which this at the Hammer Museum a few years back. Um, you know, it's an artist film uh, starring you and Raymond Pettibone. Yes, Pettibon. Pettibon, Pettibon. Compared to narrative films that you make, like feature-length films, d regardless of how much of an artist the director is or the people working on the film, generally the goal of that is to find a really big audience and make a bunch of money. Where 
I think for an artist film, the goal is to make art. And I wonder if you could describe the difference in working on those types of projects. You know, it's a, difficult to understand what the hell is, ta is being talked about in her installation. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm an actor in the installation. Plus, Raymond Bet Pettibon does this. That's what he does. So, so that isn't easy to get. You know, you have to like try to maneuver yourself since you're talking to Raymond. <clears throat> so how you do it, how I did it was, I did the following. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. You keep going. I'm going to just fix your mic here. You know, you're rolling all over the place. Yeah, and those cute little pink cheeks. <laughs> Look at your pink cheek go like this and then they go down like that. It's very cute. <laughs> Usually people get don't ever have that anymore when they when they don't no longer in Europe. People from Europe often have pink hair that goes down here, if you've mm -hmm. ever noticed. I've not noticed. And you have it. Your pink is here and goes down to here. Very nice, darling. You just find out what it is that th that is going on with this person. What is what is this person imagining? Oh, okay, I think I know what it is. This person died. And this person is talking about having left the body and how and watching the accident from a distance, and that's what that's that's what the subject here is, and but she can still move the other body and da 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 da, and you just make the story very very you, you, it is a story that you have that you that is there and but it is with me, that's very very real to me and that I'd like to communicate to an audience and that's my job, and that's what I did, with that now. I remember I, was, I once did a movie that I was too uh, lovable in, so they took me out of it because I was supposed to be a little bit more wicked or something. There's something about a studio film that's conservative, and in my experience, gives rise to gossip. I've never seen, the, the more you get organizations where they know each other, then they share an opinion, and you can't shake it loose, you know. So if you have a studio film, you can get these, this con contamination of opinion, where it's really not based on observation of any single person, but it's something that kind of gossip thing that happened. Um, and I find that um, kind of heavy and solid and unmovable, you know, you can't really do much about it. So you can, can have a very, I've had a very sad time on a couple of movies like that. Very, very, very sad. Up all night crying and so forth. You've been in nearly 200 movies. Yes. And you've been doing theater. You had your debut as a playwright recently. You've written screenplays. Thank you. Um, you're, well, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, you're performing with contemporary musicians. You're in art films. You're in a, are you a workaholic? I sincerely dislike that expression. Mm. It, it's a, a way of making less of someone who likes to create. You could probably say it about some of the Beatles. You know, they kept doing albums and albums. Paul McCartney is still writing. Um, to me, you know, if someone is creating, that's the true person that the person is. Um, and I'm sorry that um, that, that phraseology is our found its way into our culture. So to me, the more you create, you know, the, the more joy you have in living, the more pleasure you have in life. A workaholic is um, a disease of some sort. I mean, it's something that takes something that is very natural, almost native to a person, and makes it a slightly an ignominious kind of thing to be. Fair enough. I, I didn't mean to uh, put it, phrase it in anything that could be interpreted as a negative. I think what I was trying to get at was that being in LA these past few days, going to restaurants and realizing that that thing that they say about every you know waiter or wait, waitress in LA is an actor, yeah, yeah. and and you realize no, it's really true. And and I'm trying to figure out what the difference is between those who succeed, and by succeed I mean make a life in acting, okay. and those who just try this for a few years and then go do something else. Uh, that's what I'm, I guess that's my question. What's the difference I will try to answer that? that. I will try, I don't know if I can, because it's only from my point of view. And that's not truth, it's just how it seems to me. 
if you're really good at it, then you're really giving something worthwhile and you know it and others begin to know it. And it's not something you can stop just like you can't, Jason, ever stop being. So if people tell me they were acting and now they're not anymore, I, you know, I just, it's hard to me, I can't, I can't fashion, I can't process that. Why? How can you do that? If that's what you do, then why and how can you stop? I'm interested tomorrow night here in Los Angeles. Scared. You're scared. You're per going to be for performing with Cass McCombs. Uh, but you've performed with him before, and you're in his music video. I'm not your dream girl. Why, why, are you, why are you scared of that? Well, like when I did Why We Have a Body, you know, I had all these monologues and I was so thrilled and it was so fun. And I, because I know what I'm doing because it's the language, it's the word, you know, I'm good at, you know, I love the word, I love the language. That some of us aren't born into our lives. We have to look for them as if they're taking place somewhere else without us. I wish I'd known that. But singing is, is physical. It's not really thought. It's physical. And it scares me. Like to go to Memphis, but I don't know the way. I don't know if that's going to be all right or not. It's like physical. And, and besides, it's this huge place. And I've never sung this song in public. And I'm scared. I'm scared. But yet you've incorporated singing into your films, into a number of your films. That's different. Why? Because of the character singing, because it's part of the story, because I'm comfortable I'm in my imagination. When you're in, in front of people on a stage, that ain't your imagination. That's the stage, baby. When I did Memphis in, in uh, Nashville, I wasn't even nervous. I was Connie White. I wasn't nervous. She wasn't nervous, so I wasn't nervous. You know, it was like the Grand Ole Opry, how many thousand people or something. I wasn't nervous. So is that the difference, this additional layer of character? The character is singing versus tomorrow night yes. you'll be singing? I think so. Yeah. Because it's part of imagination. I find imagination so awfully comfortable. Well, now I want to make a movie with you. Why? What do you want to make? Is there anything that you haven't done that you'd like to do, genre-wise, story-wise? That's not fair, Jason. You have to say what you want to write. But you've got, you're going to write a spy one? I don't know. Maybe islands. Let's go to the islands. Islands? You know, islands. No, no, you're just pretending to be interested. You don't like the Caribbean. Oh, I've, I've, Jamaica. I've been to Jamaica. Yeah, um, so look how interested you look. No, no. I mean, I like good family drama. I do, too. We could do my movie. What's that? Oh. Deep Purple, about this crazy family in the South. I would love to read that script. Okay. Okay. I will send it along to you. Great. Oh, goodness. That would be great. Okay. <laughs>